guys, it's me, Stormy, and we're going to talk about the new moon coming October 27th at 4 degrees of Scorpio. And this new moon, first of all, I love new moons because new moons are our opportunity to plant seeds of intention so that we can begin something new. Now, it doesn't have to be that you actually begin something completely fresh and new. You could be working on something, and as it's progressing along, you're looking for a fresh start, fresh eyes, clean slate, just a different level of judge, right? Like new perspective available here in the energy of Scorpio we're looking for new emotional consciousness. We're looking for um, this energy of things needing to die off so that they can live in a better form, shedding old behaviors so that we have a space for new ones, right? So this is a really delicious kind of emotional energy. And I think at this particular point in the year, looking at your, your behavior patterns, looking at your emotional behavior patterns, all of these things as they come up at the new moon, we have the opportunity to create a fresh start, especially in any of our conscious chosen relationships that we've got happening in our lives. So this is not a particularly um, busy new moon, but it's got some aspects that I do want to point out to you because I think that they are important. So stick around and I'm going to show you and continue to give me a little bit of grace. And of course, if you have some feedback on the board, um, please let me know. I did a poll on Instagram and on Facebook and even here on YouTube to see if people wanted a little bit of a visual aid to be able to see how it, to do it. And then I had to call my friend Barbara Goldsmith and say, how did you do that? So we're going to give this a try. So roll with me. Give me a little bit of grace. Tell me if it's helpful to you or not. Okay. Now do keep in mind because this new moon is at four degrees, you want to check your chart to see where four degrees of Scorpio falls in your chart. And if you don't have your chart, you can click down below, either get one for free, cafeastrologyastro.com, any one of those is fine. You can buy a chart from me. And there's also a video below this video in the description box to show you how to actually find it because it's purposeless to give you a chart if you have no idea how to read it and find what we're actually talking about. So I've provided all of that for you, okay? All right, let's jump in and talk about this thing. Now, first of all, what's happening when we have a new moon is that the sun and the moon, the actual aspect of it, is that the sun and the moon are together. They're right there, they're holding hands, they're together, anything's possible. The new moon shows us and represents the end of a cycle and the beginning of another eight of another 28 day cycle. So this is a time where when the sun and the moon are together, truly, it's just like this burst of energy, burst of possibilities, burst of anything that could be coming to your table. So your opportunity to really get that clean slate. And because it's the moon, you have, um, ample opportunity to get a fresh emotional start. This particular moon is in a water energy. And as we see, we've got a fair amount of planets in water energies. We've got planets in other earth energies, which is very, very compatible. So this is a wonderful moon for getting a practical, useful, emotional reset to do some practical and emotional digging as well, because Scorpio is going to go to hell and back. He wants deep. He wants depth. He wants intensity of answers as to what's going on with you. Now, we've got the aspect of the conjunction of the sun and the moon happening, but the other big aspect that is happening at this moon, which is driving so much, is that the new moon is in opposition to Uranus, who is down in Taurus. Now, because this Uranian energy is stimulating this moon, and Uranus is our energy of surprise, rebellion, break free, I'm getting out of here, right? We need to do things differently. Yeah, that's been working, but this isn't working anymore. So you kind of have an energy that can start to show up. And remember, the moon is your emotions. So this is an energy where when we put these two together, what you can have is a little surprise. You can have some actions and reactions because the moon is also over your reaction that are a bit erratic or they're surprising or they're sudden or they're shocking or a sudden event or a shocking event comes into your life and that doesn't always make it bad. Sometimes we need a sudden and shocking event to come into our lives so that we can make changes, right? Because it makes us go, oh, prime example. I had a client who at a new moon was telling me about how her natal Uranian influence got pushed on during that particular moon. And what happened is this person in her work field was just always keeping on, keeping on, keeping on, not a bad person or anything like that. But she finally said, when you talk to us that way, 
It is ineffective. And the woman was shocked, right? But then it changed the entire work environment. So see, it's not always negative, but it could be shocking. You're like, boom, especially it could be changing what you're thinking. Now, I also think that the Uranian energy here can bring in some unexpected, unexpected people or events to your life. Now, I will tell you, if what this brings in for you is an unexpected person, right? They kind of blow in, maybe create a little bit of chaos, and then they're out. That's what's going to happen. Uranus does not bring energy that is meant to necessarily stay, depending on what it's in connection with. So it could be very, very quick. Now, there is something I do want to focus on with this Uranian energy being in Taurus. Taurus is an Earth energy. It's grounded. Uranus is over there, so neither one of them is particularly comfortable right now, but they're trying to work together. My concern with that energy is that Uranus is also a global energy, a society kind of energy. So with it in opposition, right, we're going in different ways. My needs versus my, or not, my needs versus my wants. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, right? With this opposition to an emotional moon, this makes me think of things in the material plane, in the Taurus plane, in the earth plane, accidents. Maybe you're not paying attention and you you get hurt. Something that is impulsive, that can happen very, very quickly. Something that is unpredictable or maybe even a little bit, seems a little bit crazy or a little bit scary. This moon is in Scorpio. So it could be something that creates depth of accident in some way, shape, or form. So I do want to make you mindful of this. And this is something to pay attention to the entire time that Uranus is in Taurus anyways, because basically what's happened is our planet of surprise has moved over and is shaking a mountain. So I wouldn't even be surprised saying that globally if we don't see maybe a global something that happens. Maybe we have a little mini earthquake someplace or something like that, right? Because we have literally put rebellion underneath a mountain. So that is a good way to get things shaken up for sure. It is shaken, not stirred, okay? Now we've got some other other aspects that are not necessarily primary aspects to this particular moon, but we do want to talk about them, okay? So first of all, we have got to see Saturn and Mars interacting here. Now we're going to be paying attention to, and we are, and we have been paying attention to Saturn for a very long time. We're going to continue to, as he continues to move closer and closer and closer to that really exact conjunction with Pluto. But before then, what we see is Saturn right here, being in a square to Mars, okay? It's not beautiful and exact on my board, but Saturn is in a square to Mars. Now, this Saturn energy, Saturn is structure, it's responsibility, it's being graceful in public, it's being very traditional, you always have your best face on, right? It is a very traditional, do what's right kind of energy. Now it is in square to Mars, who at this particular time is in the energy of Libra, right? So a square is gonna put us under pressure and it's going to stimulate us into new action, right? It's gonna say, you need to take an action here. Something needs to happen. So now you've got Saturn who is tradition and structure and maturity and grounding in a square to Mars who's action, energy movement. He's in Libra, so he is moving. You are making decisions. You are taking actions in your relationships that will bring change, right? And Saturn is like, okay, I get it. These relationships are changing, but you need to practice balance. You need to practice maturity. The Scorpio energy is ruled by Pluto. It tells us that things have to die off. They literally have to die off and allow there to be a rebirth. With this square crossing right over the energy of this moon, you could also be put in a position where the energy is telling you, hey, yes, please make these changes. Have these conversations in your relationship, but maybe your thinking, maybe your actions, maybe your attitudes need to die off in some way, shape, or form. Now, the other thing is, because you've got Saturn and Mars interacting. Saturn says, I'm the big daddy energy, and Mars says, I don't care, I do what I want. So it's very much so this parent-child kind of energy, and it can create a little bit of chaos. Not to mention we're crossing a Uranian opposition that's happening. So in it, what I can tell you is that Mars does not always love to follow the rules. He doesn't always want to be restricted and put under pressure. But somewhere in that square, you're going to have to take an action that just is the most mature version of you that accepts the most responsibility. And maybe it means you're having to take 
the high road here in some way, shape, or form in order to bring balance and in order to relieve the opposition that's happening with that particular um, Mars Saturn energy. Now we've got another thing that I want us to pay attention to. It's not necessarily in super duper aspect, but still things to pay attention to. So <clears throat> we've got Venus and Mercury. Oh, that pin doesn't work. We have got Venus and Mercury who are here and they're in conjunction with each other. Almost, almost. It's going to take a couple days for them to actually reach that conjunction, but it is still important that as of the 11th of October, Mercury moved into its shadow time to be able to take its retrograde. So what we've got ro rolling around for us right now is Mercury is at 26 degrees at this moon. So he's moving into the last degrees of this particular sign before he does that full turnaround. So Mercury at this particular moon, you guys, is moving more slowly. Right, you. If you are sensitive to the Mercury energies, maybe you've started to feel the miscommunication starting to happen a little bit, getting prepared for during this shadow time for the retrograde. But the other thing that is happening is that because Mercury is showing slowing down, and we've got this energy of needing to break free in all kinds of ways, but also get to the truth. Right, that Scorpio energy wants to dig. It wants to get to the truth. It wants to be vulnerable. Right. What may be happening is. You're trying to talk about things in relationships or you're trying to share or you're trying to make decisions with this Mercury Venus energy and because Mercury is slowing down, it's like it's not coming out right or you feel like you're not fully able to express this to another person, um, what you want or where you want this to go or what you want it to look like. But the critical thing to happen here is to allow the death and the rebirth of your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions, and your attitudes to happen with this new moon so that something else can begin and be vulnerable. Be honest about what you want, where you're at, what you need, and really, more than anything I can tell you, I think it is so critical that we just had a full moon in Aries where you were looking at you yourself right now we've got this moon across the street in the eighth house that is telling you or in scorpio energy that is telling you you need to see you and you need to see your behaviors and you need to see your own desires right this isn't just about oh you have crap behaviors and you're not showing up right what do you desire what are you passionate about because if you're not aligned with the right people if you're not aligned with the right job if you're not aligned with the right behaviors around money or relationships you're not going to be able to achieve them all of these planets are working towards your absolute greatest good but they do need a little bit of your participation as well so I think this new moon is going to be nothing short of electric and nothing short of exciting, but it can also just blow in some new opportunities or some new perspectives for you to take into consideration. And because Uranus is in Taurus, I'm just thinking about it, and this is Scorpio energy, it could blow in some brand new opportunities to make money as well. So please keep me posted down below what happens for you. How is this manifesting for you? Where is it happening in your chart? Let me know, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Bye, everyone.